Hello and welcome to another episode of the Blue Mountain Makes Podcast. I'm Mary Lynn and I'm coming to you as always from the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Today we are in my office. A little bit of a change of setup. I'm using a ring light for the first time. It's like one o'clock. No, it's not even. It's 12 30 here and it's like dark outside. So and it's kind of like icy raining so it can't be in my usual spot because it's kind of loud with um we have skylights so you can it's just like pitter patter plus the um traffic noise is like super bad today so we're at my desk and this camera is currently very precariously perched upon one two three four five six seven eight books <laughs> most of them are harry potter because they're thick so if it falls over in the middle that's why <laughs> and i'm not really sure how i got this ring light for christmas not really sure how that's going to go down. This is my first time using it, uh, but we'll see. So, welcome. This is a knitting podcast. I don't have a whole lot to share today. I'm not feeling great, and I've got a dog that's not feeling very great, so it's a nice crappy weather day to just sit and watch TV and knit a little bit. So I think I'm just going to do a little bit of recording, catch up with you guys, and then head back to the couch. <laughs> Um, so, first of all, I'm wearing a finished object. Please don't mind the rolling noise. I'm not, I'm really just not sure how this is going to come out, but we'll see. So, this is my Easy V by Caitlin Hunter. It is a worsted weight knit. I've knit it up in Simply Worsted. Oh, should I play some more, um, oh my gosh. Should I play some more I might have been watching a stream and it just clicked on. Whoopsies. Anyways, I made this in Simply Worsted. Simply Wool Worsted. It is from Knit Picks. And I really, really, really like this yarn. I will definitely be buying it again. I feel like the stitch definition is really, really nice on the gray. Um, it is pilling a little bit, but it's actually not too bad. I'm finding it worse pilling in... If you watched my last episode, I made... You have three contrast colors, and I purchased these two. Both of these are Chroma Twist Worsted. And then I stash dived for the purple color, which is actually like purple, green, and blue. And it's a mystery yarn that it very closely resembles Noro yarns. That's all I had left from that mystery ball. So that's awesome. This is going probably in the scrap pile in case I need to stuff something, but... Uh, yeah, I like being able to stash bust. That's pretty great. Um, this one's kind of, it's kind of pilling a little bit. I don't know why. Or it's, I don't know if pilling's the right word. It's kind of like fuzzing a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but, um, the other thing is it's very clearly like probably an Aaron weight, maybe bulky in some spots. So it definitely did not match the weight of the other yarns I used. And so I end up with this kind of like ripple effect on my sleeves. You can't see it so bad on the yoke, but I actually kind of like it. I mean, it's just different. Like nobody else's Easy V looks like that because people use the right weight yarn. <laughs> but I really don't mind it. Um, this is, I would definitely make this again. I don't, something's happened in my collar and I don't know if it's like my body <laughs> or how I knit it, but wearing it, this is technically backwards, like I marked it with a little bit of green yarn. So either front or back, it doesn't matter, it, the V always goes to my right. And I don't know why. And when I try to like twist it into shape, I can tell on my underarm that it's pulling the sweater wrong. And so at first when I was wearing it, you know, the right way around, I just assumed that I had counted wrong for one of the, you do the V neck in like four sections and the increases make that V. So I just assumed I, I miscounted on one of the front panels, and that's what pulled it. So I was like, oh, I'll just flip it around, and it will pull on the back, and it won't be that bad. But it still pulls to the same direction, whether I'm wearing it right side forward or whatever, backwards. <laughs> so I don't really know. It might it might just be my body. Maybe one one side of my chest is bigger than the other. I don't know, but it's not bad. And I don't notice it very much, but when I'm like nitpicky, I'm like, oh, it's not centered. And it does, oh, there's my bra strap, whoopsies. 
I try to wear a tank top underneath this so you can't see my bra. But, um, you know, you can pull it down. It's a very super stretchy, like, neckband. So it's, I think, meant to be, like, pretty slouchy up top. But I just generally wear it like a sweatshirt. So I am using this as um, an entry into Casey Apple at Young Folk Knits current knit along she's doing uh the bougie sweatshirt knit along and i think it's ending soon definitely soon because it's almost march so i might be able to finish another one to enter a third one but if on if not this is my second and i would say that this is probably between this and the weekender sweater by andrea mowry those are probably the two that i have that i would count most as bougie sweatshirts like I just throw this on over my clothes to go into work or like today I'm wearing sweatpants and I'm just cozied up on the couch and it's just very comfortable and it's oversized like my sleeves are really long I don't I don't mind it I really like it it's I will probably make another one maybe not this not this season but I might make another one for next um fall probably I think it'd be really pretty in like a burgundy with the different colors see look there it goes like way off I don't know anyways I'm not too worried about it it is what it is this is my finished easy v sweatshirt sweater <laughs> by Caitlin Hunter 10 out of 10 would recommend this pattern so that's the only finished object I have on hand the other thing I finished um don't mind my rolling my girlfriend's birthday was Thursday today Saturday so two days ago and we had been out for girls dinner a couple weeks ago and she just kind of offhand mentioned like oh if you wanted to make me something for my birthday I would be totally okay with that so I kind of stashed over and was like oh my god you can't see her my golden's behind me snoring like a lumberjack <laughs> yes so we were out to dinner she said she'd like to have something hand knit and I think she told me that on like the 9th or the 10th and her birthday is the 23rd and I was like Ugh, what can I like crank out what do I not have to order yarn for what can I knit up pretty quickly but also still look really classy so I ended up doing um the velvet mirror cowl by Dre Renee Knits and it was awesome I stashed dough for some palette yarn I don't have any of this at hand um and drops alpaca which I do have on hand uh, all right camera figure it out so between the alpaca and the palette is a two ply um 100% wool fingering weight this has just enough of a halo that it like softened it out really well and it's really pretty the funny part about that so what makes it the mirrored part is you get halfway through the length of the cowl and then she inverts the colors on the chart so that you know my primary was blue and then it became the white and it's very subtle but it's enough that if you're really looking at it you're like oh it is totally different i don't know and i don't know if that was my color choice or what that made it so subtle but the other design feature of that cowl is that it is a mobius cowl so it is twisted deliberately when you graft the ends together and for some reason I had a really hard time taking two circular needles, putting them together and thinking to myself, okay, now I have to Kitchener this shut because I've only ever Kitchenered like the ends of a toe on a sock or like the sleeves or the shoulder seams of like a pieced together sweater or something, you know? So in my head I had, I don't know why, but I was really, really struggling with Instead of taking one line and one line and making them flat together, I'm taking one circle and one circle. So I was really worried that I would untwist somehow in, in the kitchen ring. So I made extra, extra certain that all of my things lined up, that the pattern on both sides lined up, I was good to go, kept that twist in there, got all the way through, so the whole thing took a while. There was no twist. <laughs> I don't know how I untwisted the twist. I think, I guess I just overthought it. I definitely overthought it. And she even, like, specifies in part of it to, like, take half of your, like, one half of your stitches being, like, 
you have one circular and one circular so take one circular and like make sure you flip the stitches around so that that keeps the twist but I couldn't I just did I skipped that step so I'm pretty sure that's where I messed myself up but it's fine because it still looks really pretty and if you want that twist you can still kind of like like when you put it on you can just pop the edge up and manually twist it so it was fine I wore it around it looked really cute she loves it I dropped it off her house yesterday so I do not have it with me but she's tickled and today gosh it was like 80 degrees Thursday I think that's why I don't feel great today we had really nice hot weather for February all week and I had like the windows open and today they're like oh it's gonna snow which I have yet to see any snow so lies um but yeah so hopefully she's getting to wear that today and that would be really nice and that's it as far as finished projects go after that I've got three three really active whips I've, lo I've been working on this one sock forever it's the DRK everyday sock and I started it like two months ago then I lost it and it was I was gone for weeks I, I tore apart this is my craft room too tore apart the craft room went through all my bins of extra yarn like maybe I just stuffed it in here checked all my project bags checked my purses that I use could not find it finally found it last night in a backpack in my closet in the back of the shelf I don't know I don't know I don't ask questions so I might eventually have a pair of socks to show you guys but for right now it's about that long because I haven't worked on it um but let's get into some whips so my first one is my self-drafted sweater which is going okay um I'm using Rowan felted tweed is what this is and I can't find anything anywhere that says that this is a wool and spun yarn but it is so light and I've never worked with a wool and spun yarn before so I don't know I don't really have anything to compare it to I guess is what I'm trying to say but this yarn is so light that on one of those warm days I took this outside and was sitting on my porch and knitting and I set it aside got up to do something and like the wind blew and it blew the whole sweater off of the couch and like rolled down the deck so it's so light and because it's so light I'm a little concerned about how you know you, you get through the yoke and then once you add your sleeves the weight of those sleeves really pull a yoke into place and so I knit I'll just show you <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to like explain it like it's not in my lap uh that's yeah okay so this is what we got so far i really wanted a nice texture oh sorry that was probably loud i wanted a nice texture and i added cables for my raglan it's super super simple straightforward raglan sweater um but so i put it on and it fits at the yoke and it fits around my bust but the only thing i'm worried about is like this little raglan looks like it's made for a baby so is and it, there's a lot of a lot of stretch in this yarn like a lot and a part of it's because i'm doing um seed stitch for the textured part so i'm just really nervous that the sleeves are not going to weigh enough to pull that pull out and down this raglan to make it look right i mean so when i put it on i've already started working on the body like i've separated for the sleeves working on the body so i wanted to make sure that you know i had plenty of armhole depth which this should be plenty but it just looks so small so I'm a little bit nervous about it um so I started knitting a sleeve <laughs> so now I've got like two balls of yarn and two sets of needles and it's kind of nice though because it's like do I want to do something small and quick or do I just want to mindlessly these are like short tips they're from knit picks and this is what I make all of my sleeves and like hats and stuff on um, versus my chow goos, which are five inch tips. And I much prefer to knit on the five inch tips. I find it a lot faster than shorties. But I also don't like to do magic loop when I'm making sweaters. I will if I have to, but I just prefer not to if I can avoid it. So that's a long story short of I might have to rip this back out again. I have ripped it out once already. Um, with my little cable on my raglan, which I think looks really cute, uh, I kind of toyed with the idea of taking this, 
cable and wrapping it together underneath of the underarm and then continuing it down the side of the body. And I know it's been done in patterns, you know, a thousand times before, but I've never done one of those patterns before, so I couldn't really figure out in my head a smooth way to bring those two edges together without having like this weird triangle of seed stitch and then cable, you know, and I didn't want it to be stock and X and it wouldn't match the rest. And I just, in my mind, it would come like straight around and then just straight into the body cable. And it didn't, it didn't look very good. So I did try it. I tried to shift my cables together. And at some point I also realized I hate knitting cables. Like I hate knitting cables. <laughs> I love the way they look. Cannot stand to knit cables. So I was like, why am I going to make myself do this for the rest of the sweater body? Like just don't do it. It's your sweater. You can do whatever you want. Just don't do it. So I didn't. So I ripped it back out. I've tried it on quite a few times. Knock on wood. Fingers crossed. I think it's going to be good. So, you know, you would think that I would, like, research why my camera only records 10 to 15 minutes at a time and then have an answer so instead of every other week sitting down going, why won't you record? But that would require effort. <laughs> If any of you guys are familiar with the Rowan Tweed and know if it's worsted or woolen spun or if I'm just crazy or what, like, let me know. I, kn I do know it's a, it's a viscose wool and alpaca blend because you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see there's a lot of like longer fibers in here. Um, so you can definitely tell it's alpaca, but it's just so it's low light. And I bought like six or seven balls of this because it was on clearance at my local yarn store over the summer. And, you know, 50, 50 gram balls, I thought I would need quite a bit to do a sweater. But, I mean, I'm thinking I might only get through f four, maybe four and a half to five. So I'm going to have extra for sure. And I had a lot of extra from my Easy Bee. I ended up with two extra of these, which I'm not complaining about because I love this yarn. So, um... I'm unintentionally growing my stash as I'm knitting through it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the self-drafted sweater. We'll just see how it goes. I'll probably be finished with it in time to, you know, start knitting tank tops. <laughs> um, next up is yet another ranunculus. So for Christmas, uh, a friend of mine asked me to make... It's my best friend's boyfriend. He wanted her to have a knit sweater from me for Christmas from him. So he asked me to make it and I was like, yeah, okay, sure. So I'm, I made her a ranunculus and I don't know if the pattern has changed or at some point she, Midori Hirose did an update and she did, it used to just be a one size sweater and then you adjusted your needle size or your, um, the size of your, the weight of your yarn to make a, a bigger or smaller sweater. Like some people will use like a single fingering weight on a size 10 needle, US 10, and have this, you know, oversized, very airy garment, whereas other people do the 10 with like an Aran weight yarn and have a bulky sweater. So it's, it's very interesting, but that was really the only way for a long time, as I understand it, that you could adjust the sizing. Well, now she has updated the pattern so that it does include sizes, but it's a round yoke pattern. These are like the world's smallest needles to, or whatever cable to show you this on, but the yoke stays the same. No matter what size you make, this yoke is the same. It's the same number of stitches and it's the same pattern across the same cast on everything is exactly the same and then the only difference now is that she has added a raglan underneath of the round yoke so the first time i made the first ranunculus i made for myself i made last year and i think it was prior to the pattern update so when i made tammy's i didn't include any raglans because looking at the schematic of a round yoke with a raglan underneath just really looked weird to me. And even when I tried it on, we're very similar, um, definitely similar in the bust, but she has wider shoulders than I do. She works out like a fiend. So I kind of, I was a little bit nervous about 
because her shoulders are wider, I was worried that the the depth of the um, armhole was not going to be as comfortable on me or on her as it was on me. But I did not listen to my instincts and I did not go ahead with the raglan and she it is a little tight on her. And bless her heart, she wears the thing all the time. And she styles it so cute. So I'm using the same yarn. This is a cotton... Is it a cotton blend? I think I know. I've used it for many projects at this point. Cotton and nylon. So I wanted her to have something she could just toss in the wash. No big deal. So using up this, I have a whole bunch of it. But this is the last ball of this stuff. I had a ton of this that I bought years ago that I have slowly been trying to get out of my stash. So I'm going to use up the rest of it for the sweater and it's going to be great, I hope. Um, but anyways, so where was I going with that? This is totally gone. It's right out of my head. Okay, so not really sure where I was going with that train of thought. But I will be doing the raglan increases on this ranunculus. So I am now at the point where I need to section it off for the raglan. I really should have put this on a bigger cable, but I'm not going to. So if you've seen a ranunculus, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Um, this, I've done the ribbing and, you know, the yoke work. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like much, but I cast this on yesterday at like six o'clock and just did this last night and that is here's the back the modifications I do on this pattern every time this will be my fourth time knitting this one um I never do it has a section for front and back short rows and I don't ever do the front short rows because I don't like the thought of it uh I think it looks really nice especially like this is the back with the short rows so it looks good, but I just can't imagine. Hey, I just don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll make one one day with the front raglan, or shoot, front short rows, and I'll love it, and I'll be changed forever, but up until now, never done it. Don't plan on it. Um, I always do the, you have two options for um, neckline. There's a smaller and a larger. I always just go ahead and do the larger. I don't find that the the gauge that I knit mine at, um, I don't have an issue or I don't find that it's, you know, like the easy V, it's not super big. So if it generally fits just like a normal neckline, nothing too close to the neck. Um, and I think that's all, I think that's all I do to like change it up. So I'll definitely do the raglan for this one. I'm going to make it short sleeve. This is such like a thick or a heavy yarn. I should be done with this in about a week. So She's like, you don't have to make me another one. It's totally fine. And I was like, well, you know, I made it out of a cotton yarn and it is a short sleeve shirt. And she just wears it like with jeans and boots and looks really cute. And I was like, I'd like for you to be able to wear it in the spring, in the summer. But I just can't imagine having all that fabric bunched up under your underarms when you're already hot. So yeah, I think she, she deserves it. She's very knit worthy. She, oh my gosh, she wears the heck out of anything I make her. So she's getting another one. <laughs> I think she feels guilty, but I was like, don't. It's fun. It's easy to knit on. I've knit it so many times that, like, I don't stress about the pattern, you know? <laughs> Other than not using the raglan like I should have. But yeah. Vernunculus. Hooray! Alright, last but not least, last but my favorite is the Aurora Cabin Shawl by Stephen West. I'm so in love with this. Alright, so let's just backtrack real quick. My first version of this, I wanted to, I wanted to stash dive. And I wanted to go outside of my comfort zone a little bit with my colors. And I went way, 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 way outside of my comfort zone. And I did not like it. <laughs> so this was my first iteration. Which, it's pretty. Um, it's just not me. And I, I'm never going to wear this. Whatever. I, it doesn't match anything else I own. It is a stunning pattern. And I think that no matter what color you choose, it's going to be gorgeous. But... It's just a bit much for me. It was something with, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is that really throws me off. It's the, if it's the purple or the yellow, but it's one of those two that I'm just like, oh, I probably should have done, you know, the dark green, the light green, the white, and then maybe like shades of blue to kind of tie in with that green. But, um, eh, 
whatever. I've just cut it off and now I've been using it as like a tea cozy because I don't really want to unravel the whole thing and it's pretty. So it just sits next to me at my desk and you know, whatever. It's a little bit of a shame, but it is pretty. And it was fun. And because I had made it all the way through this, you know, the complicated section of this, I was not worried or hesitant with my new version. So this is where I'm at with the new one. Ta-da! Again, short cable. You would think I'd be like prepared for this. <laughs> not me. Isn't it beautiful? Get a little closer. Hopefully that light's not blowing it out too bad. I love this. It is a combination of, again, stashed items. Um, a lot of drops alpaca. So I bought a lot of alpaca last year when they had their sale. They do like a month long sale and you know all their wool products are all their alpaca products. And right now it's all their cotton blend stuff. So I did buy some cotton drops stuff coming from Wool Warehouse soon. But uh, these three colors are all drops alpaca I had in my stash. And then I took these two colors, which I had bought for the, oh my gosh, there's a ball of hair on there, gross. <laughs> uh, anyways, these two colors, which I had purchased for the Twists and Turns shawl, the fall MCAL that I ended up hating and ripping out. And I'm glad that I did because I would much rather use these yarns. They were not cheap. This is a Dirty Dye Works um, out of Boston that I picked up while I was in Maine at the end of last year. And then this is something I got from my local yarn store. And I cannot, Kel, it's Kelburn Fibers, Kelburn Knits, perennial, I think. And I love this, this stuff. I've made a shirt out of it before. It's alpaca. Um, it's very soft really lovely to work with. I love this color. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I ripped out the other because I would not have loved it. And I love how these five colors are coming together. I was a little nervous again because, you know, they're oh, fiber in here. They're a little, you know, they're a little loud, especially the orange. <laughs> but it's given me like Mayan vibes, which I don't know if that's really Mayan or Aztec, you know, like that blend of southwestern and they had always had the turquoise jewelry and stuff so I just think it's very pretty and I like it quite a lot it's super 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 soft so I've finished sections I think this is technically one and two three and four and I'm ready now to start back on the next band of the five colors which is not bad so like if you if you're looking at this going wow it's like super complicated it's not only thing that sucks about it is all five colors are attached at the same time. So he, Stephen West suggests, and I have followed his uh, suggestion, instead of cutting your colors and having to weave in all those tails after every single row to just carry all five colors up the edge. So he always uses an I-cord edging and the way that it does, like, it's not that it rolls necessarily, but it's like the bulk of the I-cord on the front of the fabric really translates well to the back with that extra, all these extra little strands in here. So they don't get in the way. They You can't really tell that they're there from the front at all. And I don't find that it like, you just have to be careful when you're, when you're carrying that many extra yarns, just don't pull it too tight, you know? So I just made sure that I kept my tension pretty loose and pulled it up the sides and I don't have any problems with it at all. I don't think it's puckering. I don't think it's like, I think it looks fine. And I'm very happy. And that means I only have, I mean, there's still, it's a Stephen West pattern. So there's still a lot of ends to weave in. Like, you know, got these and that and these, <laughs> but it's really not that bad. And like, you know, this section, you finish doing that, you keep these attached. And then you add back in your other three colors. So I have found with the five color section, I do not carry this project anywhere. It stays on this desk and I usually just like queue up a stream to watch or um, Netflix or something. And I, whatever two colors I'm working with, I pull those to the front and I just keep the other three on the other side of the desk 
and then as I go I find it's easier when everything's separated this is a really big desk like you can't see it but I've got a tower two monitors all this junk in front of me my laptop and I still have like an extra foot of empty space at the end so I can really spread out it's really nice um, and then I you know when you're switching your colors instead of just kind of tossing it back into a bag where they all get jumbled up I, I just kind of carefully flip one over the other pull this out and then I I have everything clear like I don't have a bunch of tangled yarn so that would be my suggestion if you're intimidated by I'm losing my voice <laughs> if you're intimidated by uh that many colors in a pattern or trying to juggle that much just like do it on your couch you know sit, sit somewhere where you can keep everything flat and then just pick out the ones you need as you go. I'm really not sure how many stitches you end up with at the end of the shawl, but it is Stephen West and it's his typical schlanket. So it's going to be a lot. Like this took a while for the first section and there's three sections of five color stripes. So the third section is going to be like huge and it's gonna take a long time but it's gonna be beautiful and I might just wear it like a blanket I don't know it's gonna be very large I'm already really regretting my choice of needle this is a fixed cable it's size four and I'm using my chowies and I need to free up my other size four so I can have a really nice long cable because it's very bunched up at the moment but yeah it's very fun I really enjoy it I think it's gonna be gorgeous I'm using up stash 10 out of 10 well I think that's all I have for you guys today um, if you are new here and you like knitting content like this feel free to subscribe leave me a comment I love hearing from you guys it's always such a treat to know that there are people that actually listen to me ramble on <laughs> especially when you know I try it with my husband and he just glazes over so it's fun being able to have conversations with people in the comments and I always appreciate hearing from you so like I said, leave me a comment if you'd like. Um, I will hopefully be back with you in another two weeks or so, give or take. You know, life gets in the way sometimes. But I will see you soon. And until then, be good to yourself. Do something fun. Cast on a new project. And I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.